Hi, Hello. Tanuja. Hello, Rachel. Hey, Tanuja. Hi, fellow members. Good, good. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Love Bonino's International uh, Women's Day series of conversation where we sort of take the time to discuss perspectives related to women's issues. Um, in today's session, we're going to be talking about menstrual leave. Um, I'm Rachel Claus. I'm a child and family development specialist, and I'll be a moderator for this session. Um, Love Bonito is Asia's leading fashion brand where we believe in the power of community. And to us, that means a group of like-minded women uh, really sort of supporting and sharing and growing with each other in this journey towards becoming the best versions of ourselves. This International Women's Day and every other day calls for breaking free from the expectations of womenhood and owning your perspective because your perspective matters. This week is all about feminine health and wellness and we'll be talking about menstrual leave. If you've missed our previous sessions, you can find them over at Love Bonito's YouTube channel using the link in the chat. Um, without further ado, thank you for being so patient with that little introduction. I'm so excited <laughs> to welcome our esteemed panelists, um, Tamina Kausji and Tanuja Nagden. Do you guys want to say hi, introduce yourselves? Yes. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, my name is Tamina. I'm a journalist, comms consultant, and gender equality activist. So lovely to be here with you all. I love that we're talking about periods. I love that we're talking about menstrual leave. <laughs> Welcome, Tamina. It's such an honor to have you. What about you, Tanuja? Hi, guys. I'm Tanuja. Um, I'm an animal activist. Super excited to be here. I think uh, it's such a relevant topic, much needed. Uh, Especially in the 20th century, I still can't believe we're uh, so ashamed, made to feel ashamed, ashamed uh, to talk about it. very simple. It's a biological, you know, is with a super excited. Yeah, you were cutting a little bit in and out, but I love what I did catch was that this idea of why we just still having this conversation, really want to take the time to break the bias, really want to take the time to sort of break this down. So without further ado, uh, let's start our topic tonight, which is menstrual leave. Um, and I thought I would start with like sort of a really simple question, which is just, you know, what is this stigma behind periods, do you think, Tamina? Um, you know what? I think it starts from childhood, really. Of course, I think you are dealing with a completely new generation. It'd be so awesome to hear your perspectives as well, Rachel, on how you approach it when it comes to respect for parenting. But at least, like, I think our generation in general, those of us who are in our late 20s, 30s, um, it started with even getting your period, especially in an Asian culture, right? Um, so there's this unspoken understanding that you'll learn about menstruation by yourself. And that it is, a, it is hidden, it is extremely taboo, that you get your period and then, oh my God, you just go on with your day. And then you're constantly worried about having to hide it or having to rush to the toilet when you're in school. Um, you're, you're terrified, you'll bleed through your uniform, you know. And I think a lot of that, a lot of that um, internalized trauma, it carries through into your adulthood. Whereby, I mean, I've been in office situations where, you know, it's like adult women, yeah, we're adult women. And it's like, it's like, do you, do you have a pad? Do you have a tampon? I'm like, why are we whispering? <laughs> why are we whispering? So yeah, my two cents on that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you, Tamina. I think that's, you mm. know, I work with little kids and teaching them about periods and teaching them about their bodies and teaching them, you know, girls and boys and what's the same and what's different. And I, and, and I know so much of why I've started it is because of, exactly what you said this idea of when i got my first period it was so taboo it was so hush hush what about for you tanuja what do you think is the stigma behind periods firstly can you ladies hear me am i going unfortunately you still oh. are going in and out <laughs> um, hope this goes true i think Camina made to feel ashamed um you know fearful and i think like uh, tamina put it very very uh, raw she said that it's all the conditioning 
feel you no know, women who to the extent been like painful one unfortunately tanuta we're still having a hard time hearing you you can't hear you like let me let me hear every other word my lip rate my lip reading is pretty good but <laughs> this this might be pushing it a little bit would you like to maybe go in and come back again yes let me go <laughs> okay. yes It's just me and you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll give it a minute, but yeah, that's such an interesting yeah. start to the conversation, right? And I think it's such a common experience. I think everyone um um joining us in the audience as well. I'm sure everyone's thinking back to, hmm, what was it like when I had my first period? How did my friends react? And and one thing, never 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 tell the boys about it. And I think that grows and that carries over into adulthood as well, which is why we still feel it's such a taboo, right? Yeah. I love this idea of you saying, you know, it's because, you know, we've we've been sort of raised with this idea that like, we don't talk about this to boys, we don't yeah. talk about this even to other women or other uh, other girls, mm-hmm. you feel like you still have to whisper it. And yeah. and I'm just wondering why you think discussions about period are considered taboo. Um, well, if you really want to like, you know, cycle all the way back societally and even anthropologically and socially, it's because it is interlinked with the idea of of course um fertility, but from there of course culturally speaking, it came about with so many taboos particularly around religious worship, right? I think most cultures, most backgrounds we do have rituals that we observe and we're respectful of that, but that over time um based on, you know, the general gender inequality in societies that led to a, a, a huge extreme for example in Nepal um you actually still have up to 14 deaths a year because girls wow. who are menstruating they are actually um sort of um socially um not ostracized but it is considered culturally sensitive in their society to actually spend your menstruation in an outdoors hut that is separate and away from uh from all the village and the other surrounding facilities so you've got extremes like that all the way to you know the average school girl in malaysia who may feel um utterly self conscious when she's having her period to someone who's in an office and she might feel like um you're cramping um it's horrendous but you can't feel like you can ask for period leave So yeah, you know, different realities, different societies, but I think it all comes from a general taboo that starts with not really talking about periods at all. You know, I love this sort of mm extremes that you've shown us, you know, there's Nepal and these girls that are put away in huts and sort of almost ostracized from society, you yeah. know, made to go away as they bleed because, you know, for whatever religious reasons, for whatever you know um cultural um taboos social, yeah taboos and 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 you know yeah. just how ever it sort of formed that they they are ostracized and then on this side here we are then saying what about yep. period leave you know do we exactly. get a break can we get a break can we get um time off to bleed can we get time off to you know sort of nurse our bodies back to health and and yep. And Tanuja's back. Yep. <laughs> oh yes, Tanuja is yes. back. Let's see if I can find her. Yay! I'm going to add you, Tanuja. I've been trying to add her, but it keeps telling me I can't add her. I'm going to try again, Tanuja. We're getting you. Hi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me better now? Yes. Yes, okay. loud and clear. Oh, yeah, every word now. <laughs> I moved place and I'm so far away from the router now so I really do not understand this. <laughs> um well, I would say catch you on our conversation. There's so many hearts yes. keep it going guys. Like it's it's lovely to see you guys uh, joining in. So when we were talking about Tamina just told us about how you know in Nepal they have mm-hmm. these women that are ostracized from society and 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 asked to go bleed 
you know, sort of whenever they bleed, you know, you, you, you can't be part of it, essentially, right? And yeah. then on this part of the world, we have S who's like, you know, what about, can we go away and bleed, please? Can we have a break? Can we be allowed period mm -hmm. leave? And, and I think there's really this sort of big discord. So why do you think period leave is not that common in Malaysia or even in the world in what do you, think you know, it's interesting. I just put a survey out on my on my Instagram and um, I asked, is there, you know, do, do your, your company, your workplace actually mm -hmm. practice period leave? And there's not even one vote. Oh. <laughs> there's not even one vote. Um, it's 100% no. Um, so I think it's just the fact that we don't talk about it so much. I think um, there's a toxicity at the workplace about periods, about women menstruating um, during the time of the month. I think if we engage in a very normal, natural conversations about periods, about menstrual cycles, mm -hmm. um, I think it would definitely shift the entire perspective as to possibly bringing along such thing called menstrual leaves. Because periods can be really debilitating for some women, you know, especially women who suffer from endometriosis, um, fibroids. I've had, I've got girlfriends who literally need to go to the clinic to get jabs yeah. and will not be able to go to work during their first yeah. day of cycle. Um, you know, I think it's, people really don't understand how painful it can be. Yeah. yeah, and, and you know, yeah. and you know, March is actually um, Endometriosis Awareness Month. Correct, I'm, that's I'm right. I'm so glad yeah. you brought it up, right? I mean, yeah. even if it's yeah. a disease that, on average, affects um, ten percent of women, that's not a small number, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think particularly friends who suffer from endo, it's like they've, they've really sort of internalized not to make too much of a fuss about it. Mm -hmm. When yeah. in a really extreme case, can lead to you being infertile. But of course, the 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 monthly um, torture literally and just because we um, don't have period leave um, funnily enough I did a poll on my Instagram I asked um, do you want do you think Malaysian women should get period leave so like 85% said yes so you may not have it available yeah. within the yeah. corporate structure but um, there's certainly I think a growing awareness that yeah, this is something which maybe should be there yeah. yeah, it's a very bespoke thing, isn't it? This pain. Mm -hmm. uh, some women experience it. It's one size doesn't fit all. No. Some women go through uh, monthly periods without pains and aches. And some women sure. just cannot get out of bed, um, especially if you suffer from certain health conditions, um, like Tamina was saying. So it's really bespoke um, when it comes to the menstrual cycle. I just want to quickly point out a listen that says, thank you for remembering endometriosis month. A listen, we see you and, and absolutely. I think it's interesting that you guys said, you know, I think in Tanuja's IT, she said that her poll said not a single one had it. Tamina's 85% said we should have it. And I'll be very honest, I sat here and looked at the topic. And at first I said, what's menstrual leave? Like what, huh? yeah. what do they mean? And I had to sit down and say, right. oh, they mean like, an actual leave, like when you get a period and it just, it, I, I lived abroad. I have, but I was born and raised Malaysian, but this idea kind of blew my mind. And I just thought we do have to have a conversation about it. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I really came into this sort of, I'm here to learn. I, I am interested in say, in seeing like, you know, what do you have to say about it? And, and sort of, you know, kind of begin to piece it together. Cause I work with a bunch of women and in our company, it's all women. Um, and, and just the fact that we're having this conversation then makes me think, oh, what would that look like? How would, how would we put these policies in place? What, you know, how could we support other women? You know, because endometriosis, it's not just, you know, it's not just when you get your period, it's, it's a continuous thing. And so thinking about that, when you do have your period, mm -hmm. how does that affect you at work? Tanuja. Huh, it's funny. So I am currently on my cycle. I'm a menstruator at this point in time. <laughs> Let's normalize this. You know, we need to normalize conversations like this. It's so important. And I very openly uh, speak to my colleagues, my male colleagues about this. 
And they come in and like, oh, you look really tired today. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, it's the time of the month and I'm bleeding and I'm not feeling as good. Um, and I still mm-hmm. have to come to work. And I'm, I'm not saying that, um, I'm not suffering. I'm not in a lot of pain, but bleeding out during the time of the month for a week definitely weakens you um, to a certain point. And sure. you're not definitely 100% as productive as you would like to be regardless of you know how much you push yourself but for me at the workplace i was just telling you girls this uh, when we got on our practice call earlier um when i go for filming uh, i'm like a girlfriend asked me today it's like oh you know I'm, you're on your second day of cycle like you know you're having a bit of cramps but if you were filming what would you do and i'm like that's a really interesting question i'm going to talk about this topic tonight i would just pop painkillers and and move on with um yeah with work you know because i could work in front of the camera you know i can't have it an ounce of pain in front of my face or even, even a little you'd be like oh my god I'm not feeling it so yeah just pop painkillers and how is that healthy how is that uh, not affecting our bodies in the long run so that's what I would do I think it's I sit here and I'm listening to you talk to Deja and I'm just it blows my mind this idea of choice like you mean I have a choice I have a choice to <laughs> if somebody asked me today you know what do you do when you have your period at work and it, to me it's like do, do i even have a choice like i just you just have to show up and you just have to do it and i think that's that's why this conversation is so important what about for you to me and like how does it show up for you at work and and maybe what are some of the things that you do or or if you could share your insight with us Yeah, well just personally speaking so I'm at the tail end of my cycle <laughs> last day. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all, all in it. Yeah. I love it. The law of odds, right? <laughs> you have um think about cycle. I don't know if you guys even know before. This, but, like, if you hang out before, uh, if you hang out long enough, you you think you're a cycle. You ovulate so at the same time. That's right. We It's true. Thinking we were energetically on the same level. Um, we're going to so talk yeah, about even our <laughs> menstrual cycle so you know the body's like okay, let's and advance exactly, like anybody else exactly. on your period feel free to add in yeah raise your hand yeah yeah, yeah. i Who's see a couple of hands up hand, <laughs> i see a couple of hands up but you know <laughs> yeah going back to your question i mean similarly to tanuja so i also work um on camera i do live um talk shows etc so once again it's not the sort of scenario where you have the um liberty or the space to be able to oh take a minute no you're live you're on camera right so again it's um so what i generally do but i'm also very lucky because ever since um you know i've i've been on the pill it has it has uh, massively reduced the type of cramping that i generally have that i used to suffer in my younger days but in general do the usual um try and get enough sleep try and stay hydrated but i've also been in the situation where you know you are having a heavy bleed you may be shooting outdoors and you're just sapped but you kind of have to sort of suck it up and get through it and i must say because of this biological difference you know nothing compares you know men never have to go through this sort of uh a scenario of course there are you know different reasons why you may have health issues but men never go through this specific issue so i was interesting how a couple of the comments actually say that male bosses are often more sympathetic That's um right. i just wanted to key in on my my thoughts uh, off the top of my head or why that is um similar to how um even lots of female founded companies they only actually see mothers getting um fair maternity leave when the yes. female founder herself has a bad pregnancy experience i think it comes from the lived experience that women actually are kind of harsher on other women who show that they are quote unquote weak by speaking mm-hmm. up about their periods particularly from the slightly older generation so somebody who would be like let's say a boss lady maybe in her 40s 50s they in particular would have grown up with that sort of a toxic mentality that it shows weakness rather than you know it's a chance to show empathy when a female employee says you know i'm having trouble today i just really can't focus at work so i think that's where it comes from yeah yeah women I, toxicity at the workplace it mm. really does exist to be you know good one and touching on, on that bit and, and like she said right i mean the workforce is so built ar- around the biological realities of a man oh, sure why is that cuz women work in it too it's about time they start building it around the biological realities of women as well exactly yeah no i i love how you've touched on this topic 
about this idea of you know men and women having different approaches you know um i work with a lot of parents and and i work with mm-hmm. a lot of new parents and very frequently a lot of the conversations center around finding doctors for women and it's interesting how many women would suggest you look for a male gynecologist because they're likely a bit more sympathetic over the mm. female gynecologist where the female gynecologist would just say <laughs> shove it in get it done with you know they lecture or they you know it is it's a different gentleness yet at the same time when we think about women and we think about one of our greatest sort of assets as women is that we're soft and we're nurturing and we are loving and and maybe this is also a conversation that alongside period leave is this idea that we're softening more into us as being women now having said that Mm-hmm. Both of you are in careers and jobs that don't always allow you to have period leave. Don't always allow you to sort of you know you take the time to bleed. But I think it would be interesting to explore a world like that. I think it'd be interesting to explore if we took away cuz really that's also a bias. Really that's also a sort of you know this box that we've put into this idea that if i if i go live and if i take pictures and i have to have a certain look and i have to have a certain thing in and work needs to look like that but what if we tore that apart and we said what if it could be whatever you wanted it to be what if it could be like what would period leave at work look like for you tamina hmm for me um Though I have personally not been in the scenario where I felt I've needed it, I've definitely seen colleagues like literally suffering, and then you've got to, because the cameras come on. So you know, it's like the way your heart wrenches when you see that happen. Yeah. To a woman who you you care for, who you're a colleague yeah. with, you know. So I I wish that there was the option to be able to not lose out on career opportunities if you were going to say I need period leave. for this day or for this period of time you know yeah. because i i think there's also a fear um and actually asian countries um japan south korea indonesia china among and india even um period leave is available and it has been for some time but actually stats show that um the number of women taking period leave instead of increasing it's actually severely gone down particularly in japan and south korea but that comes with the fact that you're stigmatized in the workplace if you ask for period leave and number 2 is it paid leave generally no so there's another you know aspect or economic aspect to whether or not women would speak up about it so number 1 your um workspace needs to be a safe space for you to be able to speak up about it and there needs to be some kind of a policy that prevents discrimination if you do request for period leave and thirdly yeah. i think because it is also connected to general health care and you can get sick days off where you're paid the same should apply to period leave yeah yeah like i think those are like some really powerful and key points that you've put in there this idea of You know, mm-hmm. if we are going to put this structure in this space into place, then we need to make sure that that the company is supporting it. We need to make sure that there yeah. are certain sort of safeguards that we can put in place. And and you you touch very briefly on this <clears> idea <throat> of is it paid leave? Is it sick leave? Like, how does this mm-hmm. work? Does a woman have to go to? <laughs> do I go to a doctor to say I have my period? And you know, recently we had that big debacle here. You know, this idea of you have to prove if you have your period and. Oh yes. How that what how would that work? What would it look like? Um so then should women have to go to the doctor to prove that we're bleeding or or No, I think we should just be able to say, "Hey, you know what? I'm menstruating and it provokes uh certain pains that impedes me from being 100% uh productive at work today and I should be able uh to be able sure. to, to take a menstrual leave." um and a paid one at that like the mina said you know these whole economic aspects of things where um some go unpaid some go paid um so yeah definitely we should be able to say that and not feel ashamed uh, about it at the same time because i think this whole stigma especially i don't think we have it in malaysia i am still surprised by the the toll that just went up on my instagram i don't mm-hmm. think we have it in any companies here in malaysia and that is really shocking to me 
I can honestly say I've never had an employee come to me and say I'm on my period and I I don't. But then I do. Oh, actually, I do have somebody that I teach workshops with, and mm-hmm. she's very sort of into the the cycles. And so she'll say, you know, I'm I'm bleeding this month, and you know, I need to go slower. I need to go inwards. And she'll say, you know, can I have some time? And and yeah, I think that's interesting. So I do have to play mm-hmm. devil's advocate though. As mm. a business owner, mm-hmm. I mean, if we are not going to have like sort of proof that this woman is is bleeding, that I'm just going to trust that this woman's bleeding, and I'm going to trust that you know, because there's also endometriosis, PCOS, where they bleed exactly. for months and months, right? Yes, and so then yeah. as a business owner, I'm going to ask. <laughs> like how like, excited Rachel's how? getting. Because <laughs> I'm also like, okay, wait, wait. Like, I, I'm like, I love this. This is great in an ideal world. Hundred percent agree. Break those glass yes. ceilings. Break those bias. But how to make money? Yeah. Or what if they cheat me? Yeah. So maybe help explain to me why this would be crucial to a company's success in providing period B. Oh, I think let just the owners be honest. You can take the menstrual leave, but then the onus is on you to make sure you put yeah. that back into the system later on. You know what I mean? Um, yes. Yeah. I think you just have to, to do that. It, consciously, you have to be very aware of that. So just take it. But you know what? Put it back into the system. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, <laughs> yeah, and I'll just quickly key in because uh, my partner and I, we run a small um, good communications consultancy. So a lot of our hires are actually uh, much, much younger women in their early 20s. Um, yeah. um, just mid-20s is like, you know, the highest it goes in general. So we've often found in our experience, particularly over the past three, three four years, there's an increasing um, need around acknowledging that, you know, perhaps if an individual, if she's um, having a bad period cycle, she will ask um, to be excused from work and that mm. um, we just we we just go with trusting the individual and that they will do their fair share of work and yes it is also paid leave so i think wow so you do with, have it so we do have it in malaysia tamina you practice it in your company that's great we practice know. it yes we're not a big corporation of course but i think it has to start from a space of uh okay i'll, I'll draw another a broader comparison but this is also something that came up in the news cycle lately whereby um, some people um, globally, um, there's been a trend of um, folks submitting um, false COVID positive tests to get time off work. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Rachel sounds like you, you've come across it, right? But actually when they, when they spoke to psychologists and organizational psychologists, they posited that this is actually happening because people are so extremely burnt, burnt out. out having to be literally, you know, um, keyed and glued into their computers, working from home day to day. And that's why they're doing this, not particularly because they want to slack off work or because they want to take advantage of their employers, you know. So I think that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, For example, if you do discover, let's say, an employee is actually um, not genuinely needing period leave, but she is Mm. taking it, I think you need to look at deeper issues, within the management yeah. of, your, uh, of your organization or your company. So yeah, take it with a pinch of salt and, yeah, and, not to, and, and, to, and to know that the need um, most likely is genuine. Yeah. I really appreciate that viewpoint. Like I appreciate the viewpoint of like, because I think it's important to be realistic. I think it's important to be practical. I think it's important yes. to sort of say, you know, as a company, we do want to make sure we have employees that are working when they're meant to be working. But I love that you also soften into this idea of like, look, this is our superpower women, as women, right? We, we, we look sometimes at the bigger picture and we ask, yeah. where's the lack or what is happening that this person is feeling the need to, you know, very often in my practice, we work with little kids and we say, whenever little kids have a tantrum, whenever they cry, whenever they scream, it's, there's always a need there that's not being met. They're, they're, mm-hmm. they're not screaming just for fun. Um, they're not, even if it, sometimes it comes out as anger. Just today, my daughter said, my daughter said, um, we don't feel our feelings. And when, when adults don't feel oh. their feelings, and when adults don't feel their feelings, it comes out on their children or on, their, yeah. on other people. It comes Jeez. out as anger. It comes out as lying. It comes out as, you know, yeah. numbing out or checking out. So I love that you said, 
I think we need to be looking at the culture. I think we need to be looking at what is happening for it not to be able to, for it, for it to be abused. And, and, and if we're going to implement period leave, then we need to start also thinking about safeguards. But you brought in such a beautiful piece in that you brought empathy to the table. And I want to thank you for that because I think that's what this world needs, right? Yeah. Empathy. More and so <laughs> as a business owner, again, I'm going to ask, how can companies work towards being more empathetic towards their employees? Like, how can I sit? I, like I said, I work with almost all women. Actually, right now it's all women, except for my husband. My husband's the only man in our company. Um, so how can we be more empathetic towards our female employees and normalize discussions about menstrual pains or me even, I think even just to help me out here, how do I start this conversation? Can I don't know, guess? maybe identify, identify prior hiring a, a worker, you know, sit down if she's a woman and then say, hey, you're entitled to this amount of leave um, if you do suffer from very heavy uh, period pains that would impede you from, from working 100% and being productive during that time of the month. And if they tell you, no, I'm fine and I don't need it, then I think identifying from the get-go possibly would be big help in order to ascertain that. Yeah, I love, I love this idea of earlier, um, you had mentioned, you know, we only know to do this after we've been through these pains. And so in our company, 100%, we're very sympathetic towards mothers. We always say, if you have to bring your mom, if you, bring, if you have to bring your kid, actually, if you have to take care of your mom, because we're a sandwich generation, you should take care <laughs> of your mom, and if you take care of your kid, bring them along. Um, and we make a lot of policies to fit in for children. But I'll be very honest, this is the first time I've sort of been thought about making these policies for menstruators, because I've always Period been Period policies you just, is what we right, need. You, you just sit there and you... you suck it up and you deal with it and you don't have a choice. Um, what about for you, Tamina? How I'm excited to learn how I can be more empathetic towards my female employees and, and really sort of start normalizing this conversation. Mm, I think if you, if you want to look at it from a very practical economic sort of lens, right? I think it's important to also frame it uh, through the fact, simple fact that we can't just be um, trading presenteeism and, and saying that it's okay to have employees present, but they're not 100% able to focus. Yeah. 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 The same way you wouldn't expect yeah. someone who's got a flu, you know, to be coming yeah. into the office and to be okay with that. Um, like uh, one of the comments says, you know, um, you don't just have period pains. Um, women have a total host of diverse symptoms all the way from headaches, cramps, backaches. Exactly. Um, I, I've got a friend who, um, I mean, her, her allergies really kick into high gear when she's having her period, the poor thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's a vast variety of s- symptoms across the board. And just like Tanu just said, if you're able to also communicate from the get-go, but yeah. also from an overarching perspective as a business owner, be able to frame it as this is greater for This is better for productivity. It's also better for attraction and retention of talent. You know, the way in which um, business owners are always talking about, um, even before the great COVID resignation began, the fact that um, (gasps) Xenials... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the fact that Xenials are always changing jobs. Why? Three months. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Three months. It's not even one year, two months, years anymore, it. right? Yeah. Exactly. So why is that happening? It generally has to do with the fact that your workplace is not satisfactory. Maybe the corporate mm. values don't align with personal values of younger employees in particular. Period leave or um, issues around um, how menstruation is viewed in the workplace um, mm-hmm. can actually be a big sticky point, right? Yep. Yep. So if you're able to frame it through um, greater productivity um, outcomes and also look at the fact that, okay, there's this is um, really often cited McKinsey and company study, which is called Delivering to Diversity, right? It talks about how um, companies which have more women, which have a more diverse employee pool, they're generally the ones which um, do better all the way, almost 30% better on profitability on, you know, Exactly. So, yeah, how would you I, have I, I, like a, a, a female employee bowling over, looking as white as she, yeah, uh, yeah. cringing in pain to to be working and expecting that person mm-hmm. to be one hundred percent productive? 
exactly. And, you know, the longer you can uh, retain employees who are also happy to be at work, you're able to not just be more productive, but most likely not grow your company and use their best efforts. But that'll happen if, amongst other things, they feel happy with access to period leave if they need it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually just, I am a gifter. So <laughs> I love making care packs and like that's what we try to mm. do. And, and I was thinking, oh, it'd be so nice to get like a little care package with like, because I think, you know, when women come on board, you know, we always have the welcome to our company. Here's, a, <laughs> here's what you get. And then I think it'd be so interesting to when they come, give them a period care kit. And that's because I think yeah. immediately that changes the yeah. conversation in terms of, what kind of company are we? Um, I'm just reading a few com com comments. I'm just reading a few comments. And <laughs> a hygiene saying, kit. Yeah. This is enlightening. We need to look at it from a human to human point of view. Companies need to look at their workers with empathy, not an interrogative point of view. Um, and somebody else said communication is the key between employees and employers. Um, and, you know, there's something somebody says such an interesting topic and businesses will benefit from greater productivity there's an interesting thing that we usually do in our classes and we say you know and this is open to everyone that's listening to and and it's this it's it's if you if there was one thing that you could tell your employer about your period or period leave what would it be um we'll start with you tanuja Maybe Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear that. Like, the fact that I'm, I'm a menstruator and <laughs> yeah. a cyclical. Sorry. Yeah. So if you were, I think to I, I think your... I paused. I mean, the fact yeah. that I'm a menstruator and it's a cyclically biological process that does cause pain. I think that's it. As simple as that. Let's keep it simple. Beautiful. Thanks for sharing, Tanuja. What about you, Tanina? Um, I would just say that um, this is a biological reality and it may not be a necessity every month, but um, please do keep an open mind to the fact that when it's necessary, there really is no option. And I wouldn't put it past being, in a sense, a human rights abuse if somebody feels pressured to work when they really are not able to perform, when they're in the throes of first day, second day cramps, right? If you're at the level yeah. of those 10% of the population, that's still 10% of women in any given economy, any given country, who literally cannot roll out of bed during their periods. Yeah. That is a statistical yeah. fact, right? So we've got to keep an open mind and also just keep the communication lines open because I, I, don't, think, uh, I don't think in general, given the private sector or the public sector, these conversations happen at all. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm thinking about what you said and, you know, my first few jobs before I came out as, you know, on my own. And mm -hmm. I think like, what would I tell those companies, which were for the most part run by corporations, you know, and I would say on the days, which it looks like I'm in pain and on the days where it looks like I'm not quite doing what, you know, not quite at hundred percent. I think I would just like them to know that I think for so many of us too, that we're really trying our best and, and like what Tamina says, maybe there are other factors being pulled in and, and maybe those are the reasons why I, I may not be able to care for myself as, as much as I want to. Um, I am just going to pull up a question um, here today. And somebody says, maybe males don't have a good understanding of what the pain feels like. Mali? Really? Um, <laughs> oh, Mali? Says, yes, ladies, employers also play a part in normalizing periods. It would be so interesting to see what policies you have in your company, Melise. Um, and let's see. I Come on, say, it's not easy to tell says, management. Yes. So somebody says, how can, Sherlyn says, how can employees start talking about this with their management and superiors? Any suggestions, ladies? Hmm. I would say be brave and bring it up during the next town hall. You may be faced with crickets, horrified, because Malaysians may be very brave <laughs> to speak up about yeah, that on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But I think yeah. that's the most actionable way, if a bit of a forward suggestion, bring it up during the next town hall, particularly if you have a female superior who's leading the conversation. Yeah, exactly. I think just start talking about it normally at work, start talking to especially to male employers, try to make it very natural. 
I mean, I talk about my periods to my nephews who are like 12 going into mm. their teens and, and I'm telling them like it's a normal biological process. And if you see a, a girl who's possibly leaked, um, help her, give her your, your sweater mm. and ask her to cover it and you know, go to the toilet and you deal with it. Don't worry about it, you know, because everybody's like, oh my God, it's dirty. Oh my God, it's shameful. Mm. And just make it not normal. Yeah. Yeah. Not shameful. Yeah. And not dirty. So yeah. that leads to beautifully to the next question, which is from Actually True. And she says, sometimes women feel bad about taking leave, any type of leave even, so that what can we ourselves do to stop feeling bad about taking leave? You know, this idea of what can I do to stop feeling bad about taking Where leave? Where does it stem from though? A bad employer, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. I think it comes, so from what I do, I think a lot of times it, it sort of comes from it, not necessarily the employer, go protect the, the employers, okay? <laughs> not necessarily the <laughs> bad policies. I think it's also culturally, we've been told as women, we cannot be seen as weak. We cannot be seen as, yes. as mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I think in Japan, the suicide rate is, is extremely high because mm -hmm. you're overworked. And it's this idea of if you don't work, then it, it, it's, you're not working hard enough. You're not, you know, you're not blah, 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 blah. And I think, I think, I think you hit it on the head, Tanuja. The first question is to ask, where does this come from? Yeah, where does this I've, idea of I'm not allowed to ask for leave come from? The root Go of all ahead, Tanuja. And I love how someone just said, start them young. So talk to your little boys. If you've got little boys, yes. start talking to them about it. The next generation. Exactly. And I think that the shame and guilt complex is... Um, a duality which a lot of women, not just in Asia, but globally are raised with, yep. which is why all the way from the time you're a little girl to a teenager, to a young woman, to an adult woman, you know, you carry little vestiges, little threads of it along with you. 100%. And um, especially when it's tied into uh, workplace performances, particularly in competitive yeah. industries, all the way from, you know, you've got athletes to um, those who work in the corporate sector. It's always about being superwoman. You know, I mean, also yeah. because this year's um, theme is break the bias, right? So this is something that I do as a journalist. If I'm speaking or interviewing to some sweet, sweet level top flying executive, um, I always ask the men, how do you balance your work life? Mm -hmm. mm. Don't ask that to the women, ask that to the men. Because I think that's a really important inflection point where, you know, I think men can also reflect upon the role and the responsibilities that they have in um, assisting, not just with the home, but with childcare and so many other aspects. Why do we only ask that of women? You know, why is it supposed to be super mom? Why, why not super dad as well, right? So, yeah. Exactly. yeah. There's a question I just saw a girl ask you guys. She said, I can never talk about my periods at home. How do we normalize talking about my periods at home? Mm. Um, you just got to start somewhere, girl. Just start. You know, I, I can share personal experiences of, of when I go to, to set. And, you know, um, I think I shared it earlier. Some men react to, oh, my period today. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry, Tanuja. And some go like, they don't, don't know where to look. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you just tell me your vagina is bleeding? <laughs> Yes, so indeed. Like, yes, <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. But, I do, they get, but do, but do they get used it. to it? But do they get used to it? Like after... I think uh, who work, the, yeah. those men that work with me, I think eventually they know like, yeah, the Nujas, yeah, I've worked with Tanuja over the years. It's normal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's actually normal for every woman, right? It's whether yeah. or not. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sherlyn has a quick comment. She says, my office has a community box of pads and tampons in the female toilet. Always thought yeah. that's such a nice touch. Oh, that's lovely. Other companies can try doing this. And, and I think it also, you know, ties back into the girl that's asking about, like, how do I start this conversation? I think it's, it's maybe we stop hiding our period products. Maybe it stop, sure. starts as small as that. Or right, maybe, like passing and, and the pad to your blooms, girlfriend. Yeah. When she's having maybe a period, like, in a bigger like why are we hiding it? Like, why are we hiding it? Like, here you It go. doesn't have it's to be a special, you know. Um, <laughs> little cover, <laughs> cover up kit. <laughs> yes. Yes. So having said that, um, last words first. What last words do you have on maybe just touching about period leave or any of the things that we've talked about today? Um, Tamina. Um, okay. 
I'll, I'll go for I'll go for the broader public health perspective and picture. So women's interests they matter, and making these gendered parts of women's lives easier, it should be a matter of not just um, what we are looking at in the workplace, but a matter of public concern and even public policy. So hopefully we're moving towards a society, just like um, in other Asian countries that are leading the way, Japan, South Korea, we'll eventually have menstrual leave available for women and menstruators who need it. And also there will be less stigma around it. So if you need it, you're actually able to take it and also get paid for it the same way you would if you were sick. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, you painted such a beautiful picture of what, <laughs> what we, what I, 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 I truly hope that for my daughter, who is seven mm-hmm. on Sunday. Um, but I think, wouldn't it be so amazing if, if that happens in our lifetime too, if that happens in the next five years, 10 years. In it. And I think it's conversations like this that, that begin, begin it, right? For the hundred or so people that are watching in and, and sure. all, all these hearts that I keep seeing. I think it'd be interesting to see what you guys bring back to your workplace tomorrow what about for you Tanuja what are your last words um I think my last words we stop hiding behind all the euphemisms you know and flow that time of the month you know shark week (laughs) oh dear I (laughs) hate that one (laughs) I know right there's a sharkness around me for this week I mean yeah just stop hiding behind you just say like you know what I'm bleeding I'm bleeding today I'm bleeding for the next week and you know, I'm in pain that's going to impede me from being 100% productive. And, you know, I might need a leave. I might not need a leave. But I'm just letting you know that this is happening. Go in, tell your employers. Sit the, the male employee, employee next to you, your female employee sitting behind you. Just let them know. Just talk about it. Normalize it. Because this whole stigma and taboo behind is has been around for hundreds, thousands of years now. And we need to break that glass ceiling first, I think, first and foremost. Yeah, I think it's, I think you pick up a really good point. I think one of the first things we need to do is just to stop, you know, feeling the need to make it any more or any less than it is. And sort of really owning that space and saying a period is a period, a vagina is a vagina, um, a menstruator, you know, I think it's important to first of all, talk about it and and talk about it in a way, you know, it's something that we talk very frequently with kids too, you know, this need to call it what it is because it protects them and it keeps them safe and and it allows honest, heartfelt conversation. And I think people Um, just need to be very aware that it's really just a cyclical, biologically driven pain. Exactly. People forget that. It's just so basic, you guys. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's as basic (laughs) A-S-S-S, that. <laughs> and it's the way in which, I mean, we hear everything all the way from jokes to discrimination with centers yes. around PMS. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, if there's such a wide understanding of what periods make women feel like, why should it be so difficult to translate that into an actual beneficial outcome, menstrual leave, which will help exactly. abate that. So, yeah. Exactly. Connect the dots, I, you know. <laughs> yes, I love I love what you just said. Connect the dots, and so um, to close, I want to encourage everyone that's been listening. Um, that has you know, I've been reading your comments, and it really it ranges from such diverse opinions from those that are for, from those that are against, for for those that like to play the devil's advocate and say, you know, what happens if the companies might not hire women for that? Or or others who say, hey, I've, I've taught my 11-year-old about this. And, and what I think I want to continue doing is continue having this conversation. And so I want to strongly encourage you to, you know, very frequently in my practice, what we say is that it's the edges of your comfort zone where growth really really happens you know it's the edges of the comfort zone where we have difficult conversations where we are we say look i don't know any i don't know the first thing about menstrual leave until i was asked to moderate this um and and i need to be able to say hey i'm willing to sit here for an hour and listen to tamina tell me about all these amazing beautiful things she knows and i'm willing to sit here and listen to tanuja and and (laughs) and her spirit and tenacity I can tell them, you just, it's a biological thing guys you just like you just tell them um, you just tell and, them and, and it allows me to also sort of think okay where do I sit in this or, or how yeah. do I feel about this and and maybe start making a more 
informed decision about where I stand about this. And so I want to encourage you to gather some friends, um, maybe with an open mind, maybe even with an open heart, um, and, and to really sort of this idea that there's no right or wrong, but if we keep talking to each other, we keep having conversations that, you know, maybe we'll discover new things. And so on the um, Love Bonito website, and somebody's gonna put the link down below in just a few minutes, um, there is a link to a free resource that uh, has these beautiful question cards. If you, I, I just had a look on it on different various topics that we're going to be covering um, in the next few weeks. Um, and you just pick a card and you begin. You go deep, you get empowered, and we break the bias. But I think more so than that, the thing I love about it is that it allows to, you to bring your perspective to it. Because I think everybody's perspective matters. I think Tamina's perspective has been so interesting. Tanuja's perspective has been so interesting. And, and everyone that has contributed to this conversation has been so interesting. And, and I, want to, I want to continue encouraging that. And so on behalf of Love Bonito, I want to thank both of you again for just spending the time with us and really sharing your wisdom, sharing your knowledge and, and just know that somewhere in Malaysia, there's a mama fighting for menstrual leave. Thanks for, thanks to all the wisdom that you've shared with me today. Thank you, girls. Thank you so much, ladies. It's been such a pleasure. And thank you to everyone for joining and sharing all your stories. It was so interesting to read all your comments. Yeah. And keep talking about it. Keep talking to all the male folk in your life about your <laughs> period. Beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us, Rachel. You've been such a lovely moderator. And I think most interesting have been the comments and the feedback mm -hmm. showing how much women actually talk about this, right? Yes. So let's take the conversations, let's make them bigger, and let's make sure it ends up with um, getting menstrual leave when and where we need it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, normalize Absolutely. the period talks. Thank you, Love Bonito, for having us today. Thanks, Love Bonito. We're all in our beautiful Love Bonito outfit. We are. <laughs> yes, we are. Here but I am. I like my, my black Love Bonito off-shoulder dress. So I can wear it off-shoulder and I can even put it up like this. Love that. Nice. Perfect to work. And then you go on a night out and that's it. <laughs> I love it. Exactly. <laughs> Chop and Thank change, you, right? Thank you, Love Bonito. Bye. Thank you all. Bye, ladies. Bye. Take care. Good night. Take care all. Stay safe.